Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. Kate here, and as promised, I am doing a Q&A today. So I put up a question box on my Instagram and also one on my YouTube, and I have quite a few questions that I haven't even looked at yet. So I am literally gonna look through them and answer them in real time. I haven't had time to think about the answers. So I hope you enjoy the video if you do. Be sure to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Some people are so inappropriate. Have you ever considered doing porn? Okay, have you ever had a fire accident with burlesque? Um, I have had a couple of accidents over my ooh, 10 years of doing burlesque and it's been even longer doing fire eating and fire performing. Um, so with burlesque, I did actually have an incident, but that was with a candle rather than me actually performing fire. Um, I was doing a tap dance and I think there was something, someone had spilt something on the floor and I slipped in my tap shoes, knocked over a customer's candle, the wax then went all over the floor and all over me. So I then slipped again in the wax on the floor and, uh got up and carried on, you know, you know how it is, the show must go on. So yeah, I've had an incident with a candle and when I'm actually fire performing, touch wood, I have never actually had a bad accident with fire. I do know people that have and it's awful, um, but obviously I'm a professional, I'm very careful. Obviously I do burn myself sometimes, you know, if I'm holding the fire in my mouth for ages, I might burn my lip a little bit or if I'm, you know, holding the fire for too long or there's wind, if I'm doing it outside um, and the wind changes direction, you can get like, I've got a few little scars from little burns here and there, but nothing crazy, nothing super dangerous. Um, obviously with fire, don't try it at home. Um, I am a trained professional, so yeah. Are you doing the UK Arnold? As it stands, no, I have not applied. It was a great show uh, last year and it was so nice to perform to my UK fan base and to not have to travel so far for a competition. Um, but there were a few things I didn't um, enjoy. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna leave that there, but I don't think I will ever compete in the UK or Europe ever again. Um, I think I will just stick to American shows. Any more competitions this year? Okay, so I am doing another powerlifting competition. I qualified for the British Championships after my competition I did in December, my first ever powerlifting comp. If you want to see that video, I'll put a link here. Uh, so I've qualified for the British, which is in July this year. So that's actually my next competition. I'm going to be entering a lower weight class as well, the up to 60 kilo class, um, which is kind of about where I am with my weight now, uh, maybe 61 kilos at the moment, um, which I'm really comfortable at. So that's actually my next competition for bodybuilding or fitness, because that's the division that I do. I have got my eye on a competition that I would really like to do if I'm going to do another competition, and that is a natural competition, the end of September, and that one's in Alexandra, Alexandra, somewhere in America. Um, and then if I was to win that, I would qualify for the Olympia. Um, I've got quite a few points as it is anyway. And then I would, yeah, I would hope to do the Olympia maybe just one last time. I've been invited three times, competed there once. So it'd be nice to maybe compete there again and then call it a day with the bodybuilding. How's training going for you at present? Really, really well, feeling really, really strong. As mentioned, I am prepping now for the powerlifting meet in July and everything's feeling really good. I feel super strong and I just really enjoy this program. This program is by Delroy McQueen, who prepped me for my last powerlifting comp. Um, so I can't complain, I absolutely love it. The gym is like my second home um, and I love being active. So I never don't enjoy training, to be honest. Do you ever have a day off where you can't be asked? <laughs> um, of course, I'm human, I'm not a robot, so there are plenty of days where I'm not in the mood and I don't really want to go to the gym or I don't really want to do anything, but it's kind of one of those things where it's discipline, it's a habit, and I just get up and I just go. Off season, I'm more likely to give myself a bit of a break and be like, do you know what, you can miss a day, don't worry, um, but I always make sure I do 
all of my training on my program. So obviously I have my squat day, bench day, deadlift day, and a floor press day. Um, so that's four main, four the, the four main sessions, no matter what they get done. And then I do like an additional fifth or sixth session, which is just like shoulders or back or a hit circuit. Um, I try and get some cardio in daily as well. Um, but yeah, no matter what, I do not miss those four sessions on my program and usually hit five to six sessions a week. But yeah, I am human. I have days where I really can't be bothered, but I just do it anyway. What's your daily diet when you're not training for a competition? And favourite thing to eat? Stunning and love your content. Thank you, Natis Batis. Um, my daily diet is really varied off season. I am going to admit it. I love a snack. I do love a snack. So I always have the same breakfast, whether I'm on prep or off prep, just creature of habit, which is my oats with whey. I have a scoop of like the ISO strike from Chemical Warfare. There's so many flavours, so I mix that up all the time. Then I add blueberries, raspberries, and a little bit of stevia to sweeten it up. That's my breakfast every day, no matter what. And then I snack on things like rice cakes with almond butter. Again, I have that both in season and off season. And then I'm a bit lazy when it comes to cooking, so I just buy the pre flavoured chicken from like Aldi. They have this like curried coconut chicken, which is really tasty, or lemon and garlic uh, chicken. So I often buy that and just frozen bags of vegetables that you could just pop in the microwave. And then some sort of carb. Um, if I wanna have snacks, then I'll just have things like pop chips or those lentil crisps. Um, what else do I have? I have like those little skinny bars that are like 99 calories, maybe a protein bar. They're kind of my main things. And then I'll still make my mince meal that you've seen in other vlogs. And then I'll just have more variety, like I'll eat out. Like yesterday I had some sushi with my boyfriend and that was lovely. Or I will get a salad in a restaurant if I don't wanna have like a cheat meal. I'll just order like a salad, get the dressing on the side. It's kind of still quite similar. I just probably have more snacks off season than like main meals. And, oh yeah, I forgot, I have my egg whites obviously in my oats in the morning as well. But my favorite thing to eat is obviously pizza, cheese stuffed crust, pepperoni pizza, um, and I love ice cream. But I do tend to eat the low calorie ice cream from Aldi. They do salted caramel and cookie dough. Salted caramel is my favorite. It's like 370 calories for the whole tub. So yeah, diet hack for you there. Okay, <laughs> hope you don't mind me asking how you dealt with feelings around getting divorced do you think there is still a stigma around it and I'm struggling with it I'm sorry to hear that you are struggling with that it is not easy um how did I deal with it Ooh. okay so this isn't obviously this is just my experience so it was very very difficult um very difficult but once I'd made that decision I knew that it was the right decision and no matter how hard it was, I I trusted that I'd made the right decision and followed through with it and it made me feel, not better, but it made me feel um, good in a way that I was brave enough to make that decision and stand by it and not get pulled back into like a situation that wouldn't have been right for me or the other person um i was devastated obviously um but as soon as i found out what had happened i knew that that was the only option for me personally um so yeah it was kind of one of those where it was really hard but i knew it was the right decision so i just kind of wanted to get on with it pretty quickly and just get it done and dusted and believe it or not, it can be done quite quickly. Um, obviously, if both of you just cooperate and um, obviously it's easier when you don't have um, children together or a house together or anything like that it does make it a lot easier, especially here in the UK. I know it's a little bit harder in other countries like the USA. But basically, you just surround yourself with good people. Um, make sure you've got a support system around you. Um, maybe read like other stories as well or talk to other people that have been through a similar situation. That can help. Um, but obviously, do remember every situation is unique and different. Just keep yourself busy. You know, focus on yourself and your own goals um, and what you can do now that you are in a sort of new or on a new path, um, should I say. Um, 
write a diary. I, I kind of kept a few logs of things of how I was feeling, didn't show them to anyone, just kept them for myself. And um, you just have to be really, really patient, which sucks. You just have to be patient and time really does heal wounds. Um, but um, yeah, you just have to trust that it is for the best. And even though it doesn't feel like it in the moment, everything happens for a reason and you will learn something from it and you can come out of it better and stronger and much more knowledgeable. Um, so yeah, just try and have it go as smooth as possible. Um, there's gonna be lots of moments where it's not smooth, but like I said, just make sure you have at least sort of one person there that can be there for you to get through it. And like I said, you just have to be really patient with it. Try not to let your anger um, take over and say things or do things um, irrationally, which again is, it's not easy. It's easier said than done. Um, but yeah, I, I really, I don't, I don't have the answers. Just for me, it was knowing that I would be okay eventually and that no matter how much it hurt, ultimately it was for the best. So I'm sorry if that answer is terrible. Um, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever fallen over during a burlesque show or any embarrassing thing during a dance? Yeah, so apart from the candle situation, um, one of my shows, I didn't have any um, tip tape, as you call it, for my nipple pasties. And I borrowed some glue off of the drag queen, um, but the glue, let's say, was not the best for nipple tassels. and it was just really slippery and didn't actually like hold the nipple tassel in place. So I was doing my performance, got to the end and I had people come to watch me and the nipple tassel was gone and just my boob was out, just covered in glue. So that wasn't ideal. Um, anything else embarrassing? I think the candle thing and slipping over was probably the most embarrassing and then flashing my boob, but hey, you just carry on. Oh, when I was younger in a show, that was just a musical theatre show, I didn't realise I was singing and my mic pack had fallen out of my belt. And as I chucked it back in the back, like as I was singing, I also gathered up my entire dress and tucked the dress into my tights alongside the mic. So I'm dancing and singing, turning and turning, and my butt was just out on show. And I didn't know, but hey, it's a good butt. <clears throat> Football team, I don't really like football but when I was younger I went to a football party and I needed a football kit and my mum was like pick one and I was drawn to Chelsea so I don't know if that means I support Chelsea but there you go. If you could only do one thing for the rest of your career what would it be? Coaching, competing or burlesque and dancing? Oh my god that's a hard one I never want to have to pick just one thing so thank god I don't have to. I absolutely love coaching. I find it so rewarding and I love helping other people. Obviously I like competing, but I'm kind of nearly ready to sort of move on from that. But then obviously I'm enjoying now going into the powerlifting, dancing and burlesque and performing. That's probably my number one. It's probably where my heart is and what I enjoy the most. So I'd have to say performing and burlesque would be my, my pick. Um, some really nice compliments on here. So thank you guys. <laughs> Uh, my favourite colour, pink, obviously. Do you have another, any other revenue streams like coaching, my X-shaped belt? Is there enough money in burlesque to be able to support yourself just by doing that? Good luck at the powerlifting meet and at the Olympia later. Thank you, Danny. Um, so I, uh, my money, yeah, from my online coaching business, my X-shaped belts and the bands, that's just a little extra something. And then obviously my performing, so I perform all over the weekend, which is probably, yeah, one of my main sources of income. I also have um, two sponsors that pay me a salary per month. Um, so Chemical Warfare and Factory Weights. Um, really lucky to have those. Um, they're great. And I've been with them now both for over a year. So that's awesome. And then I do my posing clients online and in person. I also do routine choreography. I used to do princess appearances and parties. Haven't really been doing that as much lately because that usually falls on weekends. And now I'm so chock-a-block performing, doing my burlesque and the shows all weekend. So I've not really done that as much. Obviously my fire performing and sometimes do like stilt walking or the odd sort of meet and greet showgirl job so yeah all of that combined um i earn a nice comfortable living 
and still have lots of time for my training and to enjoy life. So yeah, it's um, obviously you get like prize money from competitions, but trust me, that is not you earning a living. You cannot earn a living from just like competing. That's just like a little bonus. And by the time I've spent out on, you know, some of the flights or so, like only the Arnold and Olympia pay for your flight and a couple of nights at a hotel, all the other competitions you have to pay for yourself to get there and hotel, and then you pay for your costumes. They always fall on a weekend, so I miss a whole weekend of work. So once you kind of factor that in, the prize money is just a nice bonus, and sometimes you just kind of break even with that. So yeah, with all my performing and my coaching and my sponsors, um, I'm pretty good. So yeah, Tara, when's our pizza date? Whenever you want, my love, you just let me know, and we will go. We will go and eat some pizza. I am down. Who is your favourite Geordie? Why? Why I Scotty? Of course it's you. So this is my mum's cousin Scott. Love him to pieces. He's been there uh, my whole life pretty much. So um, shout out to you Scott. I love you. And of course you are my favourite Geordie. Where did you learn burlesque and what piqued your interest? So that was all kind of by chance. I was performing for a friend at a club, doing stilt walking, fire performing, dancing. And he was like um, my friend, it was actually his ex-girlfriend, but they were really good friends still. It was her 30th and he was like, she loves burlesque. Do you think you could do a burlesque show? And this is 10 years ago now. And I was like, I'm sure I could figure it out. So looked on YouTube, did some research. I was like, I could totally do that. Invested in some feather fans put together a costume and then did two acts at her birthday party. They loved it, went down so well. And from there I was like, oh my God, I love it. I want to keep going. Obviously I came up with a burlesque name, Kitty Errington, because I love cats. So I was like, that sounds good. Um, and then got in contact with Moomoo's. They needed a performer for their new cabaret show. So it was kind of all right place, right time. And that was eight years ago. So I've been at Moomoo's for eight years. And then I do other venues, private gigs, um, and I've just fallen more and more in love with it the more I've done it over the years. My memory is about to run out, so just give me a second so I can delete some stuff, and I'll be right back. And I'm back. First thing, you are super gorgeous. Thank you. Um, did you ever lift a guy heavier than you? Of course! I'm pretty strong. Yeah, I can lift up people heavier than me, especially men. No problem. Would you get married again? I'm sure if you'd have asked me this like a year ago, I'd have given you a totally different answer. Um, but 100% yes. I would definitely get married again, especially with the right person. And I, I feel like I've found my person now, so won't go into that too much, but 100% would get married again. Um, I learned a lot from my last very short marriage and um, know what I want and what I expect and what I deserve. And I think once you find someone who is a right fit for you, then why not, you know, why not do it again? Um, obviously, I only wanted to get married once, you know, I got married with the intention of being married for the rest of my life, but it doesn't always work out like that and that's okay. I would say though, if I got married again, I would probably elope. Does your partner find it hot that you pose sexily, but no, I can't see the rest of this question. So I kind of need to go on my phone. Found the rest of that question was, um, does your partner find it hot that you pose sexily, but no one can touch? Um, he thinks it's awesome. He thinks everything I do is awesome. He loves the competing, the training, the burlesque, the singing, all of it. Um, as soon as we got together, um, he saw my picture with Arnold and was like, oh my God, that's incredible. And um, when I sort of told him everything about what I do, um, he absolutely loved it. So he's been to my shows, loads of the shows, competitions, ballet shows, um, everything. And yeah, he's super supportive and just thinks it's really awesome. So absolutely adore him. He was um, definitely made for me. What three pieces of advice would you give your younger self? Oh God. Uh, I worked really hard when I was younger. So I, and, and I went out and got what I wanted. So wouldn't be anything like that. Like to work harder, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'd probably, I'd probably say like to have, to have started eating better, like been a bit healthier when I was younger. 
um because i was a bit like i wasn't as knowledgeable obviously when i was younger um i went through like anorexia when i was like nine 10 was I 11 when I was younger because I wanted to be a ballet dancer so much but obviously my physique just wasn't built right for ballet so I struggled with that a little bit and then I was really comfortable with my body as I got older I kind of came away from that whole anorexia thing and was like embraced it and then I worked away um in Ibiza for a season and they weighed us every day and they were like oh you need to lose weight like you're getting too big stop eating and I was like cool um, I kind of ignored them, but uh, <laughs> I was the head dancer and I spoke Spanish, so they needed me, so I knew I wouldn't get sacked. <laughs> but yeah, I've kind of always been, you know, when I auditioned for theatre schools, um, I got into pretty much all the ones I wanted to go to, but um, one of them, again, like when I was like really young, they like jabbed my thighs and were like, oh, you're a bit bottom heavy, you could do with losing a couple pounds. So, you know, it's always been one of those things, but it's an industry that's just like that so I don't really take it too personally especially not these days it just is what it is um they they want what they want um but I think I I maybe like with the ballet for example I tried to like pursue that and really put everything into that and then I, it just wasn't gonna work out so I realized that at a nice young age though where I was able to go down a different route but I think ultimately I would say my advice is like just give things a go and if you want to do it do it and if you can't don't worry about it you can just do something else is that really a device I don't know second piece of advice would be don't maybe trust people so easily don't be so naive I think I've been quite naive especially when I was younger definitely yeah it's been a few situations where I thought people were just being nice and there was no ulterior motive and then thirdly I guess piece of advice Oh yeah, so I said like, be a bit healthier, like be more conscious about food and stuff. Go do whatever you want, regardless of whether people think it's the right thing for you or not. Just like take risks. And then obviously like don't be too trusting and don't be too naive. Just do you. I mean, ugh, this is it's so hard when you just read the question and don't have kind of time to really think about it. I bet I'd come up with a better answer later. I'll be like, oh, that would have been a good piece of advice, but... Yeah. I wanted to know your thoughts on PED usage among women competitors. Why do you think women aren't as open about usage as men if it's so common, especially when usage is more obvious in women? Because it's just one of those taboo topics, isn't it? People just don't like to talk about it. Um, I guess because people can be really mean on the internet um, and in general very judgmental, which I understand. So I think people would rather just not talk about it. Also, people don't want to talk about it because they don't want to almost like give advice, you know. Um, people are very easily influenced. So if I started talking about all these drugs and was like, yeah, I do this and I do that, and then people start doing it because they look up to me, like what sort of person would that make me? You know, that's not um, not good, I don't think, in my opinion, to really, does it really need to be like spoken about openly? I think you could talk about the side effects, the negatives from it, why you shouldn't do it, but I think really if you want advice about that, you're better off talking to like a medical professional. So I kind of get why people don't really talk about it um, openly, because kind of what is the benefit? And also people want don't want people, like I said, don't want people to think badly of them or think they don't work hard because they still work hard, even though they're taking drugs, they are still working incredibly hard. It's just, um, I don't know, easier, more help. You know, you take stuff, you're going to get bigger muscles, you're going to recover quicker, you know, you're going to move faster, you're going to whatever. So, yeah, um, my thoughts on it, I, I obviously, I think most of you know, I don't agree with it. I'm against it. Um, I think like steroids are just, I think women should steer clear personally. Um, fine if you want to take fat burners, um, that aren't steroids. Um, again, though, if you're going to do something like that, talk to a medical professional just not not just some coach or some bikini athlete or you know some bodybuilder like actually talk to a doctor like there are people out there doctors out there that will discuss these things with you um there's one a guy called dr matt who's based in orpington muscle works gym and he helps people learn what's good what's not um, obviously he's not condoning it, but he's going to help you take it in the appropriate way if that's the route you want to go down. But I am against steroids. 
I'm not interested in it. I don't want to be that big. I don't want to ruin my body. I don't want to have side effects. I don't want to change. I don't want my voice to deepen, my jawline to get henched, to get a beard, to grow down there. Like, I'm just being honest. Not interested in any of those side effects and mainly my health. I don't want to damage my heart, my blimmin' insides. You know, I'm just, just not interested. I don't want it bad enough that I'm willing to do that to myself. I want to stay feminine. I want to stay as healthy as possible. We're already dieting and training to an extreme level, which has its unhealthy effects. Let's be honest. Dieting, extreme dieting and extreme training, you know, like anything, um, like any elite athlete, any extreme is going to be, you know, a little bit dangerous in its own way. I'm not going to add to that by taking drugs. Just, I'm just not. So yeah, that's just my <laughs> thoughts on that basically. And I've done well without it. So why would I bother? Recovery. So since your focus is powerlifting now, which is effing badass, thanks. Um, how has your rest and recovery cycles, time and ways of recovery changed, if any? Thank you for being a kick-ass motivator and just your amazing self. Thanks. Uh, my recovery is pretty much the same. I think I don't train quite as hard. Mm, that's a lie. Uh, as in, I don't do like as many hit sessions. Um, my my training sessions are still really intense, but they're like I said, they're the four main sessions, and then I do like a fifth, maybe a sixth session, um, and I just spread them out. Um, but to be fair, where I'm a little bit heavier, I'm eating a little bit more food, um, I feel like my recovery is a bit better. I'm still getting DOMS quite frequently, but I just make sure I stretch plenty, I'm taking my supplements, getting good sleep, drinking plenty of water, all the simple things really. If I could choose just three exercises, what would they be? Squat bench deadlift? <laughs> Have I modelled myself on anyone in particular, idols of years gone by? Absolutely not. I just do me. Be the best me and that's it. What is the most beneficial supplement you have taken to help with muscle recovery? Well, I drink um, EAAs during my workout. So they're electrolytes and your BCAAs, your amino acids. Um, and I've done that since forever, really. I think, yeah, that would probably be my number one. Where or what would you like to be doing in the next 10 years? Um, obviously coaching still, I want to go traveling with my boyfriend, obviously see where the competing in the powerlifting goes, see where my burlesque goes, I'd like to do some more burlesque like abroad, maybe a show in Vegas, stuff like that, um, yeah, I just kind of go with the flow really, I don't plan too far ahead. <laughs> Any tips for an overweight man starting out trying to get into shape, no real gym experience? Hi Joe. so you just need to focus on your nutrition, you need to just be in a calorie deficit in order to lose body fat. That is it. You can increase your energy expenditure by simply going out on a few walks and just moving around a little bit more. So you don't need to do anything drastic. You don't have to join the gym immediately and be doing crazy workouts. You just need to eat in a calorie deficit and just move a little bit more. So I would say maybe increase your steps to like 8,000 a day or 10,000 a day. Get a tracker so you can track it and then download an app like MyFitnessPal track your food, figure out where you're at, and then just drop your calories ever so slightly until you start to see a gradual drop each week. I do have an ebook on how to diet, so I'll put the link here. Why did you and Terry split? I was shocked. So people have been asking this question for a long time, obviously ever since it happened. Um, I know a lot of people were very invested in our relationship and our joint YouTube. Um, I'm going to keep it real simple. One of us cheated and it wasn't me. Did it hurt when you fell from heaven? Oh, it sure did. Um, my favourite cardio? Mm, I like just going out for walks mm, and generally I just stick to the treadmill. If I'm doing cardio for a comp, I obviously love my hit circuits as well. They're fun. And dancing. Dancing is the best cardio actually. There you go. Dancing. I do salsa lessons um, with my boyfriend. That's so fun. So yeah, salsa. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you all taking the time to ask these questions and, uh, you know, comment on these videos, like the videos, subscribe to the channel, commenting on my posts on Instagram and on here. Like, um, I love it. I love the sport. Love doing these videos. So any other videos you want to see or maybe any questions for a future video, you can pop them down below. And uh, I will see you very, very soon. Lots of love. Have a great week. Mwah.